We're going to go ahead and talk about the central dogma of molecular biology or the central dogma of DNA. So while you're coloring in the word central dogma, know that a dogma is basically an idea that is held to be true and is not controversial in any way. So the dogma of DNA or molecular biology is summarized in the image below. The idea is that DNA codes for RNA and that RNA codes for protein and that information flows one way, always from DNA to RNA to protein. So you can go ahead and color in each of those images below and make a note that to get from DNA to RNA, there's a process called transcription. And then to get from RNA to protein, there's a process called translation. Uh, we will learn more about those processes later on. You've learned the structure of DNA, so you should now know that is a double helix. RNA is another nucleic acid, but instead of being deoxyribonucleic acid, it is ribonucleic acid. It has a different sugar, and it is single-stranded. And again, you'll learn more about it when we study transcription and translation. And then protein looks completely different from DNA or RNA because it's not a nucleic acid. It's not built up of nucleotides. Proteins are made of amino acids. And I always think about it as a protein is like a party. It looks like a party. It's twisted and complicated. It's like a tangle of yarn. So go ahead and get those notes down on the top part of the handout. The second thing we're going to talk about is genotype. So there are a couple of really important words to know. The first is genotype, and genotype is just, you can kind of get it from the name, geno as in genetic, type. So it is your genetic makeup, and each of us has many, many different genotypes because we have about 20 to 30,000 genes. So our genotype is our DNA, it's the genes in our DNA, and um, for every gene that we have, we have two alleles. The alleles are the form of the gene that we get. Sometimes those alleles are dominant and sometimes they're recessive, sometimes they're codominant. So examples of a genotype, genotypes are always two letters and you can use different letters to represent the genotype. So let's say we're talking about something like dwarfism. Dwarfism is actually a dominant genotype represented by the allele big A. And if you have a big A in your genotype, it means that you would have dwarfism, the most common form of dwarfism. Little a would then represent normal height, average height. So if you are little a, little a as your genotype, you would not have dwarfism. Go ahead and color in the DNA. Make sure you understand what a genotype is. And then we're going to move on to phenotype. You can see that I have cut up my handouts and put a little bit of information in between. So genotype and phenotype are very closely connected because your phenotype comes primarily from your genotype. I drew an arrow and I made a note that environment is part of it. So our genes matter, but so does our environment. Our environment can shape which genes are turned on or off, which genes are turned up or down, and the other thing that you should know is between genotype and phenotype, RNA plays the role. So if we look back here, DNA is our genotype. Protein is our phenotype. And in between, we have RNA. So RNA is the intermediary between our genotype and our phenotype. Phenotype, it's important you know the root. Pheno means showing. And your phenotype is your observable traits. Sometimes these are physical traits like your height, your skin color, uh, your eye color, your hair type. But these can also be things like personality traits, blood type, uh, what kind of muscle fibers you predominantly have. But regardless, phenotype is all determined from your proteins. So the proteins that get produced from your DNA affected by your environment determine your phenotype. So this is a summary of central dogma of molecular biology or the central dogma of DNA. This is probably the most fundamental idea in all of biology. So it's really important that you make sure you understand it.